Hello guys and welcome back to the Simply Code programming channel. This is Vikesh and let's get started with today's topic which is about enums or enumerations or enumerated types in Java. So before we go into enums, let's understand why we need it. When you were building when you will be building the Java applications, you will face scenarios where you will have to define some variables which will remain constant forever. For example, months of the year they are not going to change. They are always going to be 12 months in an year. Similarly, let's say name of flowers. They are not going to change. A lotus will be a lotus forever. Similarly, the name of the seasons will always remain same. The season of summer or winter will always be called summer or winter. They will not be changed. The meaning of those variables will never be overwritten or will never be changed. So you can think of them as constants, but they are not the constants which your programs may mutate or your programs may interpret differently. They will be interpreted by multiple applications, multiple components, multiple consumers in exactly the same way. Similarly, if you take the example of time zones, they are fixed. They work with the GMT with respect to the GMT time zone and they will always remain like that. So if you have if you whenever you have a situation where you have to define such constructs or such constants, always think of enum types or enumerated types. Enum is basically a language construct and you can use this language construct to define type safe variables. When we say type safe variables, what we mean is that these variables are not integer or string. They are of enum types. That's the reason Java created a completely new data type, which is called the enum type. They are by default constant, so you cannot change them. That's their property. And the way you define enums is like this. You say public enum. So instead of the keyword class, you use the keyword enum and then you define the name of the enum, the name of the enum type, and then you define the possible values just simply separating them by a comma. So for example, days of the week is again a constant thing. They will always be seven days of the week irrespective of what you do on this planet. So that's why you can declare an enum for the day and you can define those as as the values. You also notice that the values are, are caps by default. And yes, that is how you define the enums. Let's have a look at a more interesting example of the enums in the IDE now. So if I switch to the IDE, I have created a class called color, not a class, but an enum type called color. And this enum type color is basically holding all the different color types their values basically like all the Vibgyor colors, for example. So I've defined three colors here, which are red, green and blue. So you see, I've defined them as caps. They automatically become bold. You don't have to bold them. But you see an interesting thing, a difference here that there is another value in the brackets here. This was not there when we looked at this example of day. There is no value inside each of the enum types, but I have defined the value of the enum types and that is optional. There will be use cases where you want to define some enum constants where the name of the enum type is a constant, which is a placeholder, but it will have an internal value, which may be more practical for your application. So this is what your consumers see, and this is what is used whenever you call red inside your application is just for simplicity. There would be there might be use cases where you use some abbreviations and their full forms, for example, if you want to use here an abbreviation of let's say WHO and inside this you can define the value as World Health Organization. So this is just a uh, toy example I'm giving you where you will have use cases where you want to define a constant but you want to define an internal value of it which is to be read by your application elsewhere. But everybody who wants to consume this enum can just use this particular keyword. And if they want to get the value, they can get the value as well. So this is the use case where you might need to define values of your enum types as well. But whenever you have to do that, if you want to fetch the value of an enum type, you have to write some extra code, which is written here. If you are not defining the value of your enum types, your enum can be as simple as this. You don't need to define anything else apart from just defining the constant of the enum types. I'm, I'm giving a more complex use case so that it covers both of the things of using just the constants and also using the values. So 
if you just want to read the constant you can just say color dot red or color dot green or color dot blue in different classes and you will be able to refer to the enum types or use the enum types but if you want to refer to the value of the enum type then probably you need to call this method called get value so whenever you define a value what you would do is you will define a private member variable inside the enum which is defined here you can name it anything if you want you define a constructor where you set this particular value and then you define a getter so whenever some consumer application wants to refer to the value of your enum type they can call this get value method to get that so this is the enum now let's see how we can use this enum for using this enum i have this main class where i have a public static void main method and you can simply fetch the enum types by writing the code like this just write the enum type holder and then type the enum type so let me show you how this is done if you just put a dot here you will get all the enum type options so i have defined three enum types red green and blue and i get all the options so whatever option i want to choose i can just select here and i can store this inside an enum variable so if you want to just refer to the name of the enum so this c1 is holding color dot red or red so if you want to refer to this just this red then you can call the dot name method on the c1 variable so if you say c1 dot name it is going to put or print the red in caps and if you want to fetch the value inside the red remember the value is red in in small caps so if you want to refer to the or if you want to fetch the value of the red then you call the get value method which we have defined here so that's what we are doing here in this first two sysouts where we are printing the red enum name and then printing the red enum value now you can also iterate over all the enum types and for that you need to call the dot values method on the enum so you can just say color dot values which is going to iterate over all the enum types and you are just storing each of the enum type in this color placeholder then you can either call get value to get the actual value of that enum type or you can call the name to just print the name of the enum as well both of the options are available so let's just put it back to get value and let's run this code so if i run this application i get some output here which looks like this first sysout says red enum name is red in caps because we are calling the name method second says red enum value which prints red in small because we are calling the get value method and then we are iterating over all the enums so i had three enum variables here red green and blue and i'm going to iterate over all of them one by one here printing their value and not the enum constants so that's why you see the red green and blue here in small but if you just want to print the enum constants themselves and not their values then you change this to dot name and then all the enum constants will be printed here so this is how you can create enums and use enums for the constants which are never going to change in your application and that's all i want to cover for this particular session in the next session we are going to talk about annotations in java if you like this video a thumbs up would be massively appreciated and please don't forget to subscribe to simply code for more programming related videos thank you and we'll meet again in the next session